What kind of vision does Peter have about food? That's what we're going to talk about today in Acts 10. Well, we have seen some amazing things happen. Saul the persecutor being sent to Tarsus, where he's going to spend 14 years away, but he is going to bring the church. He's going to bring the message of God to a new group of people. Peter and John and the apostles are speaking in Judea and Samaria and telling God's message. Peter's still not taking any credit for the things he does, but instead tells people, this is from Jesus Christ. So at Caesarea, or Caesarea, however you want to say it, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion, who is known as the Italian cohort. Okay, that's a really funny name. What in the world does an Italian cohort mean? So it turns out a legion is made up of 6,000 men. It was divided into 10 regiments, so 600 men. We're doing math. That's a cohort. A centurion commander oversaw 100 men, one-sixth of the cohort. So his group was called the Italian cohort. See, isn't that interesting? Anyway, so he is the leader among men. One of the commentaries said that he was a convert of the gate which means that he still practiced religious faith of the Jewish people. And only the men who submitted to circumcision can become the proselytes of the law or of the righteousness. So the family, he means his household. That would have been everyone, his servants, slaves, family, children, wife, everybody. So this was an entire group. And it says that he was devout, feared God with all his household, He gave alms to the people. He was generous and he prayed continually to God. On the ninth hour, which is three in the afternoon, he sees this vision of the angel of God come to him. And Cornelius stares at him in terror. Terror meaning not awestruck, but actual terror, fear, trembling, the whole thing. Uh, What is it, Lord? In this case, not the Lord, but meaning, I think, Lord as a higher creature than I am. And he says to him, you know, your prayers and alms have ascended as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and bring one Simon who is called Peter. He is lodging with Simon the Tanner. Too many Marys and not too many Simons. I think we have too many Ananiases too. But he's at his house. And so when the angels spoke to him, he departed. He left right away, called his two servants, and soldiers who were devout also among his group and told him everything that happened, and they went to Joppa. Peter, the next day, when they were on their journey, approached the city, and Peter went up into the house at the sixth hour to pray, which would have been noon. There's differences here between the translations in ESV, which I'm reading, where uh, or NIV, where it actually translates the time. So that's why I'm doing it so quickly. So around noon. And so, you know, it says he became hungry because it's noon. It's time for lunch. And he wanted something to eat. And so while they were all preparing for the meal, Peter fell into a trance and he saw heaven before him and this great sheet descending. And it said that on the sheet were four corners of the earth. In it was all kinds of animals, reptiles, birds. And it says, Peter, kill and eat. Peter's like, Oh, no, because all those things are, quote, common or unclean. They're not part of the Jewish food rituals. They were considered to be unclean or non-kosher animals. And a voice came to him a second time and says, you know what? Well, I'm not going to say, you know what, because this is a quote. What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and then all the things were taken back up into heaven. Ooh, that's interesting. You know, and it's it's not out of line with the things that we saw Jesus talk about, where you you care about what you put in your stomach, you care about how clean your cup is, but you don't make yourself unclean by putting something in your stomach because it just goes in your stomach and then out. It, it you don't make yourself unclean by these things. You make your own self unclean by your thoughts and your heart. So I wonder if uh, Jesus was watching everything and realizing that Peter was trying to put new wine in old wineskin. He wasn't looking at the bigger picture. And that is a message to us, too. We are not bound 
by the dietary laws. We'll get into this when we get to the Old Testament, but there are legal rules, there's property rules, there's temple rules, you know, ceremonial worship rules. There's all sorts of rules in the Old Testament, and we are not subject to all of those rules, the, the, the dietary prescriptions, the, um, the forbidden food. I remember once, because I, I grew up out in the country, and I'd go visit my grandmother in the city, and she kept kosher, even though, like I said, she wasn't very religious in every manner, but she followed all the practices. And I went to a restaurant and got a ham and cheese sandwich and I threw it on her milk plates. So she had milk plates and meat plates. And when she came home and she saw me eating a ham and cheese sandwich on her milk plate, one, that was the end of my ham and cheese sandwich. Two, we had to break the dish and go bury it in ground, which, I mean, this is the middle of Chicago. There's barely any ground, but we found some ground. I dug a hole and I buried this plate. So, you know, the dietary laws are taken very, very seriously. So it says that, you know, Peter was very confused, perplexed about this situation that he saw. What does this mean? So then the man that Cornelius sent comes to the gate and calls and asks for Simon. And Peter was there. And he's still thinking about this vision, like, what does that mean? And the spirit said to Peter, behold, you know, there's men looking for you. Like, go downstairs. And go accompany them. Don't ask any questions. I, I sent them to you. So he goes downstairs and, you know, asks them, you know, well, why'd you come? And they said, you know, Cornelius, a centurion, a God-fearing man, he sent us. And we were told by this, and he was told by this whole angel to come to you. So they invited them to be a guest. You know, you think by this time, Peter would have mm, been not so shocked when these things happened. I mean, you have to be careful because when you have people trying to persecute you, you got to be careful who you just go with, right? But what, after hearing this whole story and understanding where these people came from and that the Holy Spirit said to go with them, he got up the next day and went with them. And the brothers from Joppa accompanied him, the people who were sent. So they go to Caesarea. Cornelius was expecting them, called together his whole household. And so when Peter comes in and, and met Cornelius, Cornelius fell down at his feet and worshiped him. And this is the best part. Peter lifts him up and says, stand up. I am a man. I love the other translations. There's some really good translations in all of this. One of the uh, translations said, I am only a man myself. That's NIV. But then if you look at the Message Bible, which is kind of funny, it says, none of that. I am a man. And only a man, no different from you. I think that probably stand up, I'm a man too, probably is a closer translation of that. So Peter's not trying to be God. So he talked to all the different people who were there and gathered to them and says, you yourselves know it's unlawful for a Jew to associate with someone from any other nation. But God told me that he shouldn't call any person or object that unclean. See, so this is the big lesson. We're talking about food, but the food is not just all of it, it is all of the rules. There is no one unclean. There is no object unclean. There is no people we cannot talk to. God loves everybody. We're going to see that in the Old Testament too. I, I was listening to different um, Jewish people talking about why they don't evangelize. I always wondered that. You know, like, I asked my grandma that even too. Shouldn't we be telling other people? about God and our point of view as being Jewish about God? And she goes, no, we don't really do that. that. That's what Christians do. We don't proselytize. And I thought, well, why not? And I think in some cases, it's because people are looked down upon when they're not Jewish from blood. Again, those rabbis at the um, Hala house were ready to discount me because of my last name. But then other people explain it. No, no, no. Being chosen isn't about being loved or not loved by God. It's a, it's a particular role. You know, like saying, I can run for president. Does that make me a lesser person if I can't run for president? No, not at all. We just have chosen people and chosen people are chosen people. So it can be, but I still, to this day, I guess, don't get it. Because if there is a God, he is the only God. I think we should be telling people about him. And in this case, God says, I love everybody. Don't call any person unclean. 
Peter really did get this message. And Cornelius says, you know, four days ago, I was in this house, I was praying. It was about the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And I told him all about the angels and how God had heard this and I should send for you. And Peter then says, I understand that God shows no partiality, but that every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. And that the word is done to Israel is preaching the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, that you should know what happens throughout Judea. It's gonna, it began, you know, in Galilee, the baptism of John. We go through the whole history of how we got there until Jesus was hung on a cross. God raised him up. And, and so Peter tells in one paragraph this entire story about Jesus, how this all happened, and that there's no partiality. God is sending the message to all the people. And he told us, quote, to him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Everybody, everybody, everybody. And while Peter says, you know, said all these things, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard. So now they have the gifts of the Holy Spirit and who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit now are being poured out on Gentiles. After hearing them and speaking in tongues, languages, extolling God, Peter says, can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? He commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they asked him to stay for a couple of days. So in the commentaries itself, it said that they received the Holy Spirit were from Joppa were Jews. But, and the six brothers who came with Peter and brought him there were astonished that even Gentiles now were receiving the Holy Spirit. And they didn't have to become Jews first by getting circumcised and meeting that criteria. And that ends Acts 10. What I'm going to meditate on this week is how much enthusiasm Cornelius had. In being in charge of a cohort, he didn't have to, to gain Roman respect. In fact, he probably lost him respect. But look how dedicated he was being circumcised giving alms, praying to God, he took this very seriously. His household took this very seriously. And because of it, the angel granted him this time with Peter. And Peter recognized through Peter's vision that nothing that God has called clean can be called unclean. Wow. What I'm going to pray about is the fact that we don't make artificial things unclean. There are things that are clearly behaviors, actions, not how Christians are supposed to behave. But when it comes to objects, when it comes to food, when it comes to people who are not part of a certain group, God has not called a person unclean, unworthy of hearing about God, being told the truth about God, or being baptized. And what I'm going to share with others is the fact that this gospel was made for everybody, that there was meant to be no favoritism in the kingdom of God, but that anyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of his sin through Jesus' name. Everybody who calls on God. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Remember, I have four other podcasts and you can find them all on a abetterlifeinsmallsteps.com. All the podcasts are there. Hope you're interested in some of the other ones. And remember, you can always email me at jill at smallstuffswithgod.com. Thank you so much for listening.